so ladies and gentlemen let's discuss in brief about something which i came to know recently and i've also seen this from my experience my limited experience of course i've seen this working and there's a lot of research which has to be done in this area which is the transit of jupiter no i'm not talking of the sign scorpio where it is transiting now of course it's also retrograde now but i am speaking of jupiter's transit in general all right not any specific sign so there's something interesting which we could do during this transit now you may be thinking but jupiter is always transiting somewhere yes so what to do where and when <laughs> so that's what we'll discuss here today all right and this has to do with the house where jupiter is transiting in your chart depending on your ascendant all right so there you go if you are new to the channel then please subscribe to it and if you like this video click the thumbs up at the end and if you want a consultation from me regarding any transit or any particular dasha that you are going through regarding any area of your life then you could always go down to the description section where you will find the link to my website to book a reading with me and yes as i say always god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him and today you must find him because we are going to talk of jupiter which represents the spiritual progress in somebody's chart okay so what is all this going on you know jupiter is placed somewhere but in transit it's hovering around somewhere else so what i have seen is wherever jupiter is transiting from your ascendant in your chart so take take any example so suppose you are a scorpio lagna then jupiter is in your ascendant all right so in that case for any house depending on the ascendant you could see that you can now use your free will to improve the the aspects represented by that house now why do i say that because jupiter represents the ocean of all the good qualities yes and that is why he is the greatest benefic greatest benefic of course because he represents spiritual progress jupiter represents the ability to connect to god jupiter represents our ability to understand anything which is beyond the conception of matter matter means earth water yes all these elements are there but what is beyond all this so now now what what is the hidden meaning behind this the hidden meaning is that whenever we try to elevate our consciousness then what can happen is wherever jupiter is transiting in that particular year because jupiter almost transits in a sign for one year so now it is in scorpio it is in retrogression and very soon it will start its direct motion and by the end of this year almost it will enter sagittarius of course i will make those videos later some other day but what i have seen is so suppose let's take any example let's take the example of third house so suppose somebody's jupiter is transiting in the third house so what can this person do if you are a virgo lagna then it's transiting in the third house so this can mean that if you are doing spiritual practices not just to gain some money or some name fame or any some superficial materialistic stuff which is uh, perfectly fine there's nothing wrong with that but when i'm talking of spiritual practices here i am saying of chanting mantras or you know reading the holy texts or visiting holy places without any ulterior material motive all right which you are doing only for the pleasure of god and for your inner soul who you are basically so then what what could happen is that our relationship with the third house so for anybody the third house can represent the younger sibling all right so it can happen that the younger siblings relationship with you or your relationship with this younger sibling can undergo a tremendous improvement all right this i have seen working in many cases of my uh, 
people who, of my friends and my seniors who i know from a lot of spiritual communities okay so now the question is what kind of spiritual practices you should be doing yes so what i have seen in my experiences if you do spiritual practices related to the karakas of that house all right so let's do some homework here recap i will also get a recap of the karakas <laughs> and there may be some errors which i make so please excuse them so let's talk of sun oh sorry the first house so who is the karaka for the first house yes we have sun as the karaka and mars rules the sign of aries and jupiter is jeev karak so these three planets are very important when it comes to uh, the lagna all right but primarily sun is the karak then second house jupiter is the karak then for third house mangal mars is the karak then for fourth house we have many karakas actually multiple in fact moon is the karaka for the mind and the mother and we have planets like venus which is the karaka for vehicles luxury mercury is also the karaka for education which is the fourth house and we also have mars who represents property or land especially all right then fifth house is the house of children so jupiter must be the karak and then for sixth house we have mars and saturn then seventh house is venus for men and jupiter for women and the eighth house is shani no doubt and then ninth house again jupiter and sun two planets this time and for the 10th house we have mercury as the prime karaka the prime significator then sun and saturn are also the significators and jupiter is the karaka for the 11th house and 12th house is again saturn so now see what happens is jupiter is the karaka for these houses you know primarily the second fifth ninth and 11th and 7th house also for ladies but let's ignore that house for for time being so that means second house is what second house is a feeling of being in a family all right so in that case you can also include the seventh house so let's include the seventh house so second house fifth house seventh house ninth house and 11th house five houses so second house is getting a feeling that i belong somewhere and somebody belongs to me it is a sense of belonging it is not just necessarily the uh birth relationship that you have with somebody all right not it's not necessary that that person has to be your brother by birth it's not 100% necessary then we have the fifth house fifth house is what is the house of children so it's like feeling as if there is a child it's a great feeling yes that is why almost every human being that i know in this world i mean at the ones who i know now there are many who don't uh, but most of the people that i have met in the last 20 30 years i have rarely seen anybody hating children or i have rarely seen anybody uh, telling me that you know oh i hate children i don't like children now you may not like very much that's fine but in general you know everybody likes children and then we have the seventh house a sense of commitment marriage a sense of belonging then ninth house a sense of getting guidance from somebody and 11th house is the fulfillment of desire so jupiter rules these prime houses of feeling good basically second house family fifth house children in seventh house being with somebody yes ninth house getting guidance from somebody from your father or from your guru from your senior and 11th house is again friends network circles building people so that means wherever jupiter transits if we do spiritual practices related to the karaka of that house then these significations second fifth seventh ninth and eleventh these significations also come to that house all right but that's the prerequisite we need to do spiritual practices we need to do uh, worship of the avatars all right so everybody knows the avatars which are associated with the uh, nine planets so i will not repeat them unnecessarily here and uh, so for example if you are scorpio lagna and jupiter is transiting in your ascendant now all right so for ascendant sun is the karak and the vishnu avatar which is representing sun is lord ram himself 
all right so if you do some worship related to lord ram you know for moon it is krishna and mars nursing them so we know that list vaman dev for jupiter so if we do the mantras for the avatars or if you can visit some temple and do some austerity there yes especially if you can go and do fasting on that day so for example if it is you ascendant then you can do it on sunday because surya is the karak if it is 10th house now if there are multiple karakas for a house like for example the 10th house so then you have to see which aspect of the 10th house are you lacking because mercury is the prime karaka for the 10th house because it is the karaka for skill so if you are lacking skill in your profession if you are not been promoted because you feel that you are not competent enough to do your job or your business or whatever then you need to do for mercury and suppose you are unable to get name fame success then you have to do for sun because that's what the uh, that is why sun is also the karaka for the 10th house and if you are not able to put efforts properly which means you are, you lack consistency at work you cannot do hard work then saturn is the karaka so for the then you have to do for saturn and then you might have to fast on saturdays all right so these are the things which we can do and if we do then i have seen uh, great things happening all right i have seen this within 6 months or within 3 months also i have seen that somebody is uh, jupiter is transiting in third house for say uh, virgo lagna and if that person now till november till the time when jupiter is transiting their third house if suppose uh jupiter go uh, that that person goes and worships lord nursing dev why do i say nursing dev because third house the karaka is mars and for mars the deity is nursing dev all right so if they go and worship lord nursing dev they can chant this mantra om namo bhagavate narasimhaya this mantra they can chant then for nursing dev we have other uh, mantras also yes ugram viram maha vishnum jolantam sarvato mukham narsingham bishanam bhadram mrityur mrityo namamyaham yes and we also have you know so many so many things are there om namo bhagavate narasimhaya so many it's like too many things are there you can also uh, read uh, particular stuff from the shrimad bhagavatam so for example whichever house jupiter is transiting from your ascendant you can take that canto of the shrimad bhagavatam all right so there are 12 cantos of the shrimad bhagavatam and they say that the 12 houses or the 12 signs they represent you know the 12 cantos so if your jupiter is transiting the third house like for virgo as i said then you can go to the third canto and start reading it okay or the whole the scripture specific to that deity so for example uh if it is the third house then nursing dev so in that case you can go for narsimha puran yes then uh some similar stuff you can also find in the uh there's another purana I, i'm not able to recall the name but there are lot, lots of stuff which you will also find in some similar books all right so you can also for for example if it's the lagna then you can read ramayana because it's lord ram yes and for the fourth house if you are having issues with your mental peace then you can read gita because krishna is the one because that will signify moon okay so it depends on what you want and if it is the sixth house then you can read the sixth canto yes so there are many things which we can do to activate these uh, powerful potent energies regarding jupiter all right so you can do this and you can also do it uh, for you know 3 months 6 months and then if you get results then you can always mail me that it worked or if you don't get results then also you can mail me that it doesn't work all right but anyways we can always do what's the harm in doing i mean if it works then it's great so let us activate these houses by doing the necessary remedies and mantras and depending on your chart it will be it will be decided what remedies you have to do ultimately all right and whatever remedies you do i will always give caution the please do not do it whimsically just by seeing some video in youtube like this or any other video okay please go to your trusted astrologer and whatever they confirm only do that remedy all right why i will tell you why 
बिकॉज रिसेंटली आई हैड इन्वाइटेड अमन जी अमन बेदी जी माय चैनल टू एक्टिवेट सर्टेन नक्षत्रास ओके नाउ वॉट हैपन वॉज देर वॉज वन पर्सन हु हैड मैसेज मी दैट they did they did this remedy and they kind of activated some house and after some time somebody in their family passed all right now of course i am not saying that that person was blaming me or aman ji no that person didn't do that now and i am also not telling that just because they activated that nakshatra in a particular house or lord of a particular sign or any house that that relative passed away i am not saying that but who knows you know we we might do something and then later on we may keep thinking oh maybe because i did this that happened now whether it happened because of that or not that secondary but when that goes into our head you know we kind of keep cursing ourselves you will curse yourself you will curse the one who told you the remedy all right so uh, this has to be done properly in consultation with your personal astrologer all right because i do not want to create disturbance in somebody's life all right and if you think you don't want to do th- these things then it's perfectly fine and there's nothing new or fancy or out of the world stuff which i have spoken i mean it's this is very simple basic stuff that you empower the karakas for a particular house and then you see the changes in transit all right so i hope this helps and uh, you can try and you can give your feedback to me yes so there you go if you're new then please like comment share and subscribe to the channel and if you want a consultation from me then you could go down to the description section where you will find the link to my website for consultations okay god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him